If you own a property and have a second mortgage on it, and if you want to keep this property and get rid of the second loan, attorney Shaw Parali can help. Call 510-742-5887. Due to the uncertain economy, many people have settled their debts for a fraction of its value. It's recommended to use an experienced lawyer to deal with it. Shaw Parali is an experienced debt settlement attorney and has handled hundreds of such cases successfully. There are no upfront fees for debt settlement. Only when you win, you pay. Call Shaw Parali, attorney at law, at 510-742-5887 or visit yourdebtsettlementattorney.com for a free assessment. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is established by this ad. The law does not guarantee success. Call 510-742-5887. Are you an H-1B visa holder? Do you have an I-140 petition approved or have an extension under AC-21 provisions? Are you on H-4 visa? If yes, we've got amazing news for you. As of May 26, 2015, you or your spouse on H-4 visa might be eligible for a work permit, aka EAD. And to apply, you need a lawyer who knows about H-4 visa issues. Lawyer Shah Parali has been at the forefront of this fight for H-4 rights and has actually helped make this dream a reality. Now, his firm is ready to help you or your spouse get their EADs. Call 510-742-5887 or visit www.splgpc.com to apply for your EAD. This is an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is created by this ad. The Shaw Purely Law Group and Emmy Law Help, Inc. are proud to announce the release of the Immigration Law Podcast on iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, and other renowned podcast channels. Immigration Law Podcast was designed to provide the audience with information on various U.S. immigration issues. The podcasts are unique because they are presented by the prominent attorney, Shaw Purely, covering topics such as B-1, B-2 visas, visitor and business visas, H-1B visas, L-1 visas, O visas, EB-1 visas, student visas, perm labor certifications, national interest waivers, NIW, green cards, and citizenship. Although educational in nature, the podcasts provide a rare insight on immigration news and politics from an experienced lawyer's perspective. Immigration Law Podcasts, a unique perspective on immigration law. Download them from iTunes or Google Play. For more information, visit attorneyonair.com or call 510-742-5887. This is just an advertisement. No attorney-client relationship is created by this ad. And now, from the San Francisco Bay Area Studios, KLOK proudly presents to you the prominent attorney Shaw Perelli for the Shaw Perelli Law Show, coming at you with over 50,000 watts of power. The Shaw Perelli Law Show. Where all your views matter. Hello, 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 everybody. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Khan. Namaskar to all the listeners. This is Attorney Shah Parali for the Shah Parali Law Show. As you know, now our show is, is on Thursdays and Friday night, uh, uh, midnight. So um, we, we wanted to discuss about, of course, about many issues. Unfortunately, Monday shows, we are no longer doing the Monday shows live because of, uh, of the, our commitments. And I wanted to thank you all for listening. We're still here on KLOK, uh, moving strong. And today I have on the, on the board with me, Mark, uh, Franco, I'm saying Mark, uh, Mark Franco. And I will be, I'll be more than glad to, today to discuss about all the issues regarding immigration. First of all, anything I'm telling you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. Uh, I say special hi and thank you to all my friends listening. And uh, I know we have callers already, Franco, but before I start taking the callers, uh, the number to the studio, by the way, is 408-912-5565. We'll be taking all the car questions regarding immigration. Uh, first of all, New Jersey, 
side news we have this uh, train derailing so uh, we don't know I don't have more information except it's sad and our heart goes to all the people of New Jersey I know I have a lot of friends there and a lot of clients there so uh, stay safe and hopefully it is um, things that will be sorted out there uh, and then also, of course, we have all the political debates going on. We didn't hear much about immigration except uh, bad things from uh, Donald Trump. And at this point in time, nobody really knows who's going to win. But things are, are getting closer and closer, another maybe less than one month, uh, a little bit more than one month for the election. So things are going to change, so be ready for that. And another news also, we have a lot of people who are having... Uh, companies who have filed H-1Bs now. Uh, today we had one person, uh, not today, I think a couple of days ago, uh, getting arrested for H-1Bs, uh, procurement of H-1Bs through fraud, which is kind of a big word, but they are kind of going after many of consulting companies. We'll talk about that. But let me take the callers first. Uh, this is Sharp Rai. You're live on air. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, this is Gayatri. Hi, guys. How are you? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Franco, I think I lost the call, so if you have another call, I'll take the other caller. This is Shapra, you alive in here? Hello? Okay, sorry, I, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. We might have some technical issues, so again, today, uh, if you want to call, the studio line is 408 5565 If you want to do a consultation, please call our office. 5107425887 as a footnote here we get uh, almost 100 calls a day unfortunately i cannot attend to all of them unless you schedule a consultation uh, sometimes you can post your question on our forum sp law forum if i uh, if i'm not too busy i will answer but the best is to do a consultation 510-742-5887 and the number to the studio today is 408 nine one two five five six five and if you are not getting the line keep trying because that's the way it goes uh, too many people calling at the same time sometimes clock the line and that's what happened right now we we lost the we lost the caller let me take another caller this is sharp Ray. you're live in here hello? hello yes yeah hi hi Gatri. how are you i'm good uh we have a question regarding the uh green card crossing with yes. respect to h1 extensions Yes. Uh, we are in the process of uh, submitting the documentation for 485. Uh -huh. And uh, we, if in case we end up getting the biometrics appointment request when we are in India, because we are planning a trip to India soon. Mm -hmm. So how do we do go accordingly? I mean, do we have to come in time and do the biometrics as per the appointment, or is there an option for us to reschedule or something? Well, first of all, uh, yes, you can reschedule. Uh, that's one thing, but make sure you reschedule on time and have the lawyer monetary so that you don't lose the chance. And second, if you don't have an H-1B step, make sure you get an advance parole before traveling. Because if you uh, if you file an adjustment of status and you leave, uh, you leave and you don't have an advance parole, they won't let you come back. So make sure your H-1B is good so that you can come back, okay? As for the reschedule of biometrics, yes, you can, okay? You can ask yes. them to reschedule for you. Good luck to you. Let me take another caller. This is Sharp Rai. You're live on air. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Ravi. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, travel to Canada. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so my in-laws travel from here, uh, from uh, U.S. to Canada, and now they want, want to come back to U.S. and from here travel back to India. So will there be any issue coming back from Canada to U.S.? Yes, I know it all depends on the officer, but most of the time for elderly people, they don't give a hard time because they know they like to travel to, especially when they have relatives in different countries. But uh, uh, I, yes, it might happen. I, only one time I saw that the, the officer refused at the airport, say you were just in the U.S., why are you coming back? But 90% chances you won't have any problem. But um, sometimes they do. But, but very rarely, as long as you can explain why you're coming back here, you just went to Canada. How long did they stay before they going to Canada? Uh, they stayed here for three months. Okay, so they might ask them, hey, why you want to come back right now? You just, you were three months. So if you have a good reason, explain that reason, okay? Okay, all right, thank you. Good luck to you. 
Let me take another caller. This is Sharp Rally. You're live in here. Hey, Sharp. My name is Kapil, and uh, Kapil. I have a question regarding uh, my firm. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, my company filed my firm like a couple of months back. They got the prevailing wage determination, and currently it's going through the advertisement phase. Yes. I, I live in uh, this uh, West Coast, and they are moving me to the Eastern East Coast, New York. So yes. I'm just not sure, is it going to impact my bond petition, which is already in process, or uh, how is it going to impact it, impact my bond petition? Uh, that's a very good question. It might, depending where the job offer ultimately will be. For example, you can be living in the on the East Coast, and then your final job offer will be uh, on the West Coast. Uh, and um, at that point, it is okay. But uh, remember, the perm is for future employment, so you don't have to be working at the spot where they're filing it. But if you're mm -hmm. permanently going to move on the East Coast, they have to redo the, the prevailing wage according to that county where you are in. So make sure that... Uh, the, so I would recommend if you're moving there permanently to do another PWD uh, there on the East Coast. <coughs> Uh, okay, because uh, it's it's a, like a client based com it's a consulting company and there's a new client, so I'm not sure how long I'll be staying there. But if if it is like permanent as of now, should I just ask them to refile the prevailing wage determination? No, but if it is, this is where it gets tricky because if it is just a temporary movement and the the company is located on the west coast and you're going to be here on the west coast, then it's fine. So it's very hard to tell until we know where where exactly. Uh, but this, if the mother ho house and the company is on the west coast, so keep it here. So it, okay. that's, it's just logic. As long as if you're moving permanently, then you you have to do a new one. But if you're not, then you keep it on the same one. But be very careful which address you're putting because that can become a problem down the road. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck to you. Let me take another caller. This is Sharp Ray. You're live in here. Hello. Hello? Hello? I think I lost the caller, Franco. Do we have other callers? I'm so sorry today. We are just got suddenly everybody calling at the same time and it just kind of clogged the line. So I apologize for that. Keep calling 408-912-5565. Let me take another caller. This is Sharp Rai. You're live in here. Hi, I have a question. So yes. I wanted to, I'm filing my H1 amendment and I wanted to file H4 and H4 for my wife. But mm -hmm. uh, we might uh, need to travel. So first question, is it okay if I file and she travels in the middle of the process? Second question, if not, if if I have already filed it and she wants to travel, can I cancel her H4, H4 uh, once she's out of the country? Okay, very good question. If you are doing only the EAD, she's already an H4, then no problem. You don't have to cancel it. But if you are transferring, for example, from F1 or another visa to H4, then filing the EAD, then uh, you will need to wait or don't file it. Let her come back and then you f come back on H4. When she come back on H4, then you file only the EAD. I, I, I talked about this um, a lot on my blog h 4 com, wwwh 4 com. You have to put the www. I don't know why, but it's there. Um, I, I talked about that. If you are doing a change of status, then there's no that you need to, the change of status will die automatically when she leaves. But if you're not doing change of status or extension of status, then the best is to let her come back on H4, then apply for her EAD. It will go faster. Okay. So, so what if if I apply for H1 and H4 change of status, she's on uh, OPT actually. So if I apply H1 and H4 and uh, she travels, so uh, will this uh, application which I filed will be automatically cancelled and she can go for H4 stamping? Yes. But you don't have to apply it. If you already know she's leaving, wh why waste the money? No. Better to leave and come That's back. Actually, that is not confirmed, but I have to file my H1 uh, right okay, away. Yeah, so yeah, you can. You don't have to even cancel it. You can just leave. It will automatically be canceled. But in case they ask you, you can tell them she left. Because by law, once you do an extension of status or change of status, uh, and you leave, it dies with with that uh, with uh, by you leaving unless it's approved. Okay. All right. So good luck. Let me take another caller. This is Shabrai. You're live in here. 
Hi, I have a question regarding uh, uh, renewal of U.S. passport. Uh, yes. Which form do I fill it out? Uh, the U.S. passport. You have to go to the post office. They will do it right there. The, the, it's not filled here. You fill it directly at the U.S. post office or the passport office. Just go to the post office. They will fill the form right there for you. Oh, great. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Let me take another caller. This is Shah Parai. You're live in here. Uh, morning, Mr. Shah. Thanks for yes, taking sir. my call. Uh, my You're welcome. My question is to the EB2 data filing. Um, from what I gather and read on uh, Visa Bulletin, looks like mm -hmm. uh, USCIS is now honoring the April 2009 uh, for the date of filing for uh, adjustment of status. Um, yes. Do you anticipate any further movement with respect to that in the coming months? Well, I did a, a prediction last year, uh, last uh, last week on my radio show. What I'm thinking is that I don't think they will increase the acceptance date uh, higher, but I think only thing will be moving forward is a processing date. Uh, probably okay. until after the elections, then things are going to get moving. Right now, I. I don't anticipate they will take the chance, but there might be a chance it actually might retrogress to beginning of 2009. So for all those who are, who are eligible right now, file it quickly because if you don't, right now it's still on July 2009. Uh, in, one, in two days it will be on April. So make sure you guys are all filing. And if you are lucky, we might see a jump, but I don't think it, I think it will be either status quo or it will be retrogress. Uh, so that's you, my anticipation so far. Do you think after elections it will move towards the end of 2009? It might, depending who wins the election, right? <laughs> that's oh, okay, got that's it. That's my question. Uh, right now everything second, is going by that. Uh, the second question is, uh, there is a six-month uh, satisfying period for, like, uh, you have to work for your employer after your green card for uh, six months, right? Um, if a company A, where the employer employee files his green card, is being sold to company B, uh, not because of his voluntary interest, but you know probably by the company's business interest. Then how mm -hmm. does it uh, impact uh, that six-month uh, satisfying rule? Well, that six-month satisfying rule is not even a rule. <laughs> it's an oh, accepted uh, thing. We always tell people to do that to be on uh, to be on the safe side. Uh, right. But if uh, if the job was genuine and they are changing you to another location it doesn't change anything you're still okay because if it is a merger and acquisition you're fine but if you are getting laid off after that you're still okay because you can explain you work for that company for so many years that problem become a very serious if you are working for another co one company a and company b file for your green card and then you have to move to b or you never move to b then it becomes a problem Otherwise, if you have worked for that company for a long time, even you leave after one month, they will question you. But as long as you can show it was genuine job, a genuine job offer, it, it is not a problem. But the six-month or one-year rule is something that we lawyers have kind of agreed on. A hey, that shows genuineness of the part of the employee. It's not a mandatory rule, as okay? okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Good for luck. Let me take another caller. This is Sharp Ray. You are live in here. Hello. Hello. Yes, you're live in here. Uh, hi, I have a question regarding OPT. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so my OPT started in January, and um, uh, my project, I mean, uh, have reported in to DSO in uh, February. Mm hmm. Uh, and then my payroll started running until uh, May 31st. Mm hmm. From March 31st to May 31st. Uh, so my question is, uh, from May 31st till today, uh, my payroll has stopped. So would I be um, able to apply for a OPT extension? Like uh, I hear like 150 unemployment days. So would that come under um, for the payroll? Yeah, it all depends. This is the thing. If you do, you have the regular OPT right now, right? The first year, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, the first year OPT is not that straight. If as long as you have a job, so you should be able to apply. But right now, quickly in my head, I cannot calculate the days on the on this call. But yeah. you might want to give me a call at the office. We can do a calculation. But I think you should be fine to apply. But make sure that you have not violated the original OPT because the first year OPT is not that strict. 
as long as you okay. don't violate that and your DSO is working with you, you should be able to get an STEM extension. Now, provided you fall into the STEM category. And remember, if you're working with a consulting company, the, the end client is the one who has to sign the uh, form 983. Many people don't know that, but 983, uh, can the, the employer can be signed as a consulting company, but uh, the monitoring part of the 983 form has to be signed by the end client. So uh, I don't think that days um, you miss, it all depends because OPT first year, even you don't work for, for payment, you're okay as long as you have the job. But there are okay. other issues that can come into play. But still, go ahead, file your STEM extension, okay? But huh? on initial OPT, it is not mandatory to run the payroll, right? The first year, no. run payroll is a different issue. It is mandatory by state law. But okay. under, okay. under immigration law, no. So state law says you cannot make people work for free. Okay. 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 But okay. Uh, federal law doesn't require you to be paid under that. So, for example, you go work for a, uh, for a non-profit organization, you're working for free. You still satisfy the one-year OPT because you're still working, but you're working volunteer. But volunteer okay. cannot be done with a profit organization. So it's very, very tricky. And a lot of people get confused because the state law conflicting with federal law and immigration law, etc. So be careful. Just make sure everything is in compliance and file your paperwork, okay? Got, I just have a one more last question. So can um, I change I my employer uh, uh, in the first period when, when the payroll ran? Uh, I was with a different employer and I have... Yeah, a, I, I think I have... Your, your question is going to be too tricky. I think I have another caller, but you give me a call and we can talk a little bit more. 510-742-5887. Let me take another caller, Franco. This is Shabra. Are you live on air? Hello? 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 Uh, hi, uh, my name is Naveen. I have a question regarding H1B. Uh, currently, I'm on L2 EAD and uh, I'm working in a company. And before joining this company, I'd applied for H1B. And uh, in the lottery, my uh, H1B got picked up. Now, mm -hmm. since I'm already working on L2 EAD, I don't want to take with H1B with that particular small company. I would like to continue with the L2 EAD. Now, how do I let go of my H1B and continue on L2 EAD itself? Well, there are two ways to do that. First of all, we need to know uh, if there was a change of status or council of process. It's, it's a change of status. Okay, so the best way is you have a stamp of L2 on your passport? Yes, I do have it. Okay, so what you need to do, you need to leave the country uh, tomorrow, come back on, uh, on Oct October 2nd, and uh -huh. uh, you will be back on track, on L come back on L2. That's it. Yeah, uh, yeah, but what... What if uh, I have not I have not yet received the approval of H one B? I just got the I seven nine seven C form, and okay. uh, I haven't got the approval letter for the H one B. So as what if I get, get, get after October? Yeah, as soon as you get the approval, you do exactly what I just told you. Because once you get the approval, what will happen? The case will be change of status. The other mm -hmm. option is to cancel the H one B, which I don't recommend you doing because you never know when you might need it. Because once the H-1B is approved, you make it, you become cap exempt. So you might be able to revive that H-1B when you need to. So my recommendation is as soon as you get an approval, the next day, go to, if you live in the Bay Area or something, mm -hmm. or close to, just go to Mexico in the morning, come back in the afternoon, and come back on L2, you should be fine. Okay? Oh, I can do that. Okay, okay perfect. Good. Thank okay. you. Sir. Good luck to you. Let me take another caller. This is Sharp Riley. You are live on air. Hello? Hello. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know, I cannot answer long questions because uh, that's what had just happened right now. So many people uh, are not very happy because they've been waiting on the line. So we will limit it to maybe one question. If it is a too short question, I will answer. I'll try my best. But if you want to a specific case, your case in details, then the best is to do a consultation with us. The number to our office is 510 seven four two five eight eight seven i just don't want to be rude at the same time you know other people we have to be fair i have only a few minutes to continue on the show so i have to give a chance to everybody let me take another caller this is sharp rally you're live on air hi sir uh, yes. this is Tapan. Hi, and uh, first of all thanks a lot your show is really helpful oh thank you so much i appreciate your your kind words i have one question regarding the h1b extension Yes. My current I-797 is going to expire on July 2017. 
and uh-huh. i am a beneficiary of i140 petition yeah. now i am planning to travel to india in the month of january uh-huh. and i am planning to come back in february yes but uh, let's say in a worst case i have to stay there because of some other circumstances mm-hmm. then is it possible to extend my i797 from india of course okay. that's what you have to do extend your i797 by law you can you can file for the extension 180 days before it expires so if you're leaving around february have your company even started and uh, it will be a consular processing but since, uh, do you have a stamp on your passport uh no my stamp is expired actually. okay then as soon as it's approved you can go and get your stamp and come back but yes even if you are in india you can file uh, the extension of 797 no problem okay okay thank you very much sir good luck to you sir thank you for your words your kind words let me take another caller this is shapra you are live in here yeah i have a question a girl she has a h1 and she's getting married to a citizen Mm-hmm. uh us citizen uh, but she's going to go out of country and get married there and once she comes back uh, how do you suggest her to um, uh, go oh. for a change of status yeah she does an adjustment of status because h1b is a dual intent visa so there's nothing to hide you just go ahead and explain that you got married and you're coming back and then you can file for the adjustment of status and if you need help you can call us we can handle it for you because okay so if the registration already in that country for marriage marriage registered in that country will work here or she will have yes. to register again yeah very good question marriage from any country which is not against us policy is recognized like india is marriage is recognized pakistan is recognized The only time a marriage is not recognized if the marriage is against uh public policy. For example, bigamy, for example, in in certain uh countries they have uh marriage which is not registered, those will not be accepted. But as long as it's registered in India, yes, it will be accepted. So what you should do, get married, come back mm-hmm. here and we come back here you file for the adjustment of status. Within 3-4 mm-hmm. months you can file the work permit together. She gets a work permit within within 90 days. and she will have an interview for her citizenship within like 6 month or so and if she passes it she'll get her green card okay thank you very much mr ah oh, good luck thank and if you need help give us a call we can handle sure, it sure 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 congratulations okay. to her for getting married okay well, okay thank you so much <laughs> you're welcome so ladies and gentlemen um we we have some very very interesting questions today and uh and it's uh, it's uh, it, it went all the way from biometric rescheduling re-entry for on the B1 uh labor certification H1B amendment passport F1 student OPT etc so i really appreciate your call just to let you know you know the reason i can keep this show going is because i have your support i've been doing this show now for almost 7 years and and i'm very very proud of the people listening and i'm i'm very proud of our work we have been able to do for the community uh i am the president of a law firm which is a profit law firm but at the same time this is my way to return it to the community as much as i can i will explain to you and fortunately whenever i give you this uh, advice it's not an advice that i can give on the radio i can only give you information on the background because uh the law is very strict on that i cannot i am not trying to because unless i sit down with you or talk to you on the phone for like half an hour there's no way i can give you a perfect answer but as much as possible i answer your questions uh simple questions and i'm very happy for that and our franco telling me that i have another caller let me take another caller this is shapra you are live in here hello yes sir. uh hi my name is amit and i have a question yeah. about h4 uh, ead status like so i am on h1b visa yes my, my wife is on h4 visa with ead card um uh-huh. so my my question is if i change my uh, employer how does that affect uh, my wife Uh, H4 EAD card. Yeah, that's a good question that I get all the time. It doesn't affect the EAD as long as the H4 is maintained properly. Remember the EAD is attached to the H4. The H4 is attached to the H1. If you are doing a transfer which is properly done, you just have to file an extension for the H4 for your wife to be on the safe side and the EAD will just follow the H4. So, okay. but if if the H1 uh, breaks in the middle, the H4 will break and the EAD breaks. Okay, I understand that. But my point is like okay, I want to put it with the previous employer and uh, if I get the new employer, they have to file I want to put it again, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter because if you 
yeah it doesn't matter this is another good question and actually i covered that on a video yesterday or the day before if you go on my youtube channel slash youtube.com slash sharp law or just go on www.h42ead.com i posted the youtube there what it basically it is the rule says clearly the i-140 does not have to be with the company where you're working okay it can be with any company even if it is revoked, if the if the H EAD was already obtained and it was revoked later, you still keep that EAD. The only time it will become a problem if you break the the, the continuance of the H1, then you will need a new I140 if there's no I140 from the past. So even the I140 is from company A, you're working with company B, you can still use it. Okay. Okay, so I mean, uh, if, like let's say with the previous company, the I-140 or sorry, the H-1B is expiring very soon. The new company has to file H-1B, and then uh, EAD will be transferred to the new company's uh, H-1B, and then expiration date will be like whatever the H-1B is on, right? Yes, as long as the H-1B is maintained. The biggest problem people don't understand is not the EAD and H-4 which has a problem. It's actually the H-1 itself. Because okay. whenever you pass six years, you're trying to transfer, okay? If, right. whenever you pass six years, before six years, is not, the problem is not there. You have to have an I-140 alive at the time of the approval. It doesn't matter, okay. people think, oh, I have some time left. No, it doesn't count. Yes, go okay. ahead. Thank you. You're welcome. So this is a very important point because I wanted to make that clear to people because they get confused on that. Whenever you're moving to another company, you're doing a transfer, after you pass six years, at the time of the transfer approval, not the filing, the I-140 has to be alive or some kind of extension, 365 days, has to be alive. If it dies before the, 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 the transfer is approved, they will deny the transfer. Dying means basically the company revoke it right now but once it's approved you have three years you you you're okay even they, they they revoke it after that because you still have three years but you have a problem because that three years belongs only to company b where you're moving so you cannot use that same time and say oh i have three years now i want to carry it forward to company c if you want to move to c you have to have another i-140 or any i-140 in your hand to do that so this is where a lot of people get confused and they end up by losing the H1B. So be very careful there. So I wanted to bring that uh, to the to the, to the the on the table today because this is another issue that we talk about a lot. So Franco, I don't know if I have more callers right now. And uh, today this is Attorney Sharp Rally live on air uh, on uh, KLOK 1170 AM. And uh, our show is now uh, on 10 to 11 on Thursdays and Friday night, uh, midnight to 1, which is um, early morning on Saturday, midnight to 1, so you can listen to it uh, again. And uh, since I have a lot of things to talk about, I don't know if I'll be able to take more callers right now. I don't know how much time is left, uh, Franco, but we will be talking a little bit about, before I move to debt settlement, I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on on the on the front of uh, of news when it comes to immigration. Number one, UNNJ updates. Uh, two of the people who were helping students get visas with UNNJ has uh, have pleaded guilty uh, yesterday of fraud, and they are probably going to get some time in in, in jail and in prison now, unfortunately. And those are that and UNNJ situation I heard that there is an attorney out there who's doing a class action but again I have not seen the class action but it's a good attorney I heard a lot of good things about him so hopefully he will continue on that and also H1B for those who have H1Bs uh, and uh, you are H1, an H1B company be very careful what you are using as your end client or even as your in-house projects because if any of those are fake they are also going in criminal charges against those companies actually two person was arrested yesterday too so be very very careful all this thing is not a game uh, and hiring people who are not good lawyers or not lawyers doing that is bad and we are <laughs> right now that's all we are doing we are spending more time correcting other people's mistake than than in uh, than anything else mistakes are okay we all make mistakes but if there's fraud committed you're going to be in trouble let me take one caller before i move to the next topic this is sharp regular live here 
the i140 was good or you were beneficiary of an h uh, of a beyond 6 years extension the ead doesn't die like that but if you are doing a transfer the transfer of the h1 is is broken in the middle somehow you have to do consular processing then you might have to refile but people are confused and they are writing a lot of nonsense on those on those forums and i really get sometimes irritated when i when i see what they write there they don't know what they are talking about especially those famous forum has a lot of garbage and just to let people know you should not rely on them because many of those famous and you, most people know which one i'm talking about those are not run by lawyers they are run by companies that have nothing to do with law and honestly i don't know why the government is letting them do that because this is illegal what they're doing in terms of giving uh, legal advice without a license but don't that's not the rule the rule if it is obtained you have it at the time when the i140 is approved and if you have a beyond 6 years extension is still eligible for the h4 ed so the h4 ed will not die just because the i140 gets cut off but the h1 can be a problem the h1 if it is not transferred properly and oh it is transferred and the i140 gets cut off in the middle then you might not get the h1 and if the h1 gets cut off then the h4 and the ed will get cut off so it is very very important that you talk to a good lawyer who understand that before you make any move or refile the case okay So after six years, if H1 and H4 are properly transferred, then uh, both are good. Only if H1 gets into any issue during the transfer, then H4 is also impacted. After six years, when I want to switch to a new company, is that correct? Exactly. Because okay. what 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 happened? There are other permutations that can happen, but what you just said is is exactly right. So but I know someone called me yesterday they said they are putting this all over this famous forum I don't want to mention it and people know which one I'm talking about and they are writing this but that's not the rule okay make sure that uh you people understand that no you don't get impacted worst case scenario if you break the chain in the H1 you might have to get back an H4 then you might have to refile a new one but if you are doing the transfer properly you're safe okay okay, okay. all right thank you Yeah, welcome. Thank you. I will take one last caller before I have I have to talk a little bit about debt settlement. This is Sharp Rai, you are live in here. What case scenario if you break the chain with that one? Hello. Hello. I have to refile you one. Can you please turn on the radio in the background, please. Hello. I think I have to move on, Franco. Uh I don't know. I didn't get the call online. This is Sharp Rai, you are live in here? Yeah, hi Sharp, this is Sudesh speaking. Hi Sudesh, how are you? Sorry. Hi. Go ahead. Sorry. Thank you for taking uh, my call. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh this is regarding the citizenship. Yes. So when you apply for citizenship, uh, I heard like uh, uh minor kids will uh, automatically get into citizenship. Mhm. Uh so my question is uh, uh like uh, um, uh I I'm completing my 5 years uh, next August 10th. Mhm. Uh, Uh, my son is uh, uh, getting 18 years on August 17. So, mm-hmm. how many months uh, before I can apply for citizenship? Or uh, if, uh, when I apply, if it turns into 18, what happens to the uh, that application? Okay. Um. Uh. So first of all, if you apply and you get the citizenship before your son turn 18. he will get it with you not at the application but at the date it is given so let's say he turns 18 before you d- you swear in he doesn't get it with you then he has to apply on his own okay oh, so yeah. and then you can file for your citizenship depending on your case it's usually either uh 2 years and 9 months or if you're married to a US citizen or if uh, it is 4 years and 9 months But even if you apply this time they won't give it to you like 4 months later. 
So it's not at the time you apply when your son is not 18. It's at the time they grant it to you. So if they grant it to you and your son has not turned 18, he gets automatic citizenship. But if he turns 18 even one day late, uh, before, then he doesn't get it. Okay? Oh, okay. So, okay. Okay. I mean, usually how long, how long it will take? Um, depending where you are, but right now, because of background check, it's taking like six months to eight months. Okay? Okay. So, okay. better to have a separate uh, application for him. Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. uh, yeah. At this point, I think, yes, to be, to be ready for that. Okay? And I think he will pass for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, I really apologize. You know, we got so many callers today, and I will, <laughs> Franco was telling me the lines are blazing, and I'm trying my best to accommodate everybody, but sometimes I cannot. So, you can either call next week, next th Thursday show, or you can also um, call us at the office to get uh, a full consultation. The number is 510 742 5887 and I'm going to discuss a little bit uh, about about uh, about debt settlement. Uh, for for example, here what we are talking here, um, uh, we are talking about uh, how people can get out of debt without filing for bankruptcy. And uh, one one of the things that people don't know is 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 um, oftentimes in America when you have debt, uh, debts are not usually criminal matters, right? That means you don't really get a arrested if you owe someone, unless it's the government or tax, that might be a different issue. But we're talking about, for example, you owe credit cards. Unless you commit some fraud, you don't get arrested for it. And many people call me, so basically they are working pretty much uh, all, all day just to pay credit cards, and they are not paying their, their, their food almost, uh, their rent or things like that because they want to pay the credit cards. But that's not the way it is in America. You can settle those debts. You can negotiate those debts. Of course, it might take a l it might actually a little bit uh, hurt your credit in the beginning, but, but quickly it will bring you back on track because once you do the settlement, that means you settle with them for less than the amount due, we can, you can end up by giving them a chance to... To, you can get a chance to start over on on settlement. So uh, settlement is is bottom line works. A, yeah, you you have a hundred thousand dollar debt, for example, in credit cards or twenty thousand dollars. We go and we negotiate with them and tell them, you know what, you owe that much money. Uh, my client owes that much money. I'm willing to offer you a certain amount of money. Otherwise, we will take uh, whatever we need to do to protect our client. By saying that, we get a chance to negotiate with them, and most of the time we are able to settle it for a fraction of its value. For example, we have a v v lot of examples where people owe, uh, we had one client who owed, uh, I think, $600,000, we settled it for 200000 Another one for, I think, uh, 700000 we settled it for 300000 The only thing is that um, what you have, you have to basically make sure you have some money to pay them for the settlement amount because we cannot negotiate for you and say you will pay $20,000, for example, for 100000 and you don't have the money. So be careful and make sure that you can negotiate on those. And those are not debt consolidation. We don't do that and we don't believe in debt consolidation because they all, most of them are just fake stuff. So what we're doing here is what we call pre-litigation. We know there will be a lawsuit, or there's already a lawsuit. We negotiate with them. We say, hey, you know what, guys, we will work with you and get you out of this. And we do it in a way which protects your legal uh, stuff and make you get a chance to move forward. One of the things many people try to do, they try to do it on their own, which is sometimes helpful, but oftentimes the problem is that by doing it on your own, you don't have the protection, the shield of the lawyer in between, and we are lawyers. So we can we can help you in, 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 in dealing with those. The website to check is your debt settlement attorney dot com. Your debt settlement attorney dot com. We can do that for second mortgages if the house is underwater. We can do it for credit cards. We can do it for many, many other things um, um, that we can uh, we can help you with. And the other thing that we are doing also recently, a lot of people, they are getting basically their, their companies are going after them because they owe money. Uh, they say, oh, you did an H-1B with me. Now you, you left the company, you need to pay me. Usually they can't really claim that money. 
but we can help you negotiate with them and get rid of this debt. We have done many of them and we have been very successful and we recommend that you call us if you need help on those, 510-742-5887 and the website to check is yourdebtsettlementattorney.com and also attorneyonair.com uh, for immigration. Please check it. We want you to also subscribe to our videos. Uh, if you go on YouTube slash Sharp Rally Law, we have a lot of information because now I'm a little bit busy, so instead of writing articles, I am going ahead and filing uh, and basically putting uh, videos out there. So we recommend that you, you check those. So ladies and gentlemen, anything I'm telling you today is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. And I think Amit is still there. Amit, are you there? Uh, hey, Shai, yes, I'm here. Hi, Amit. Sorry I took a little bit longer today. So no Amit, you have eight minutes to go, so I wish you best of luck. And we will be back on Thursday from 10 to 11. So good luck to you. And, uh, and uh, Franco, thank you so much. We'll be back on